Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Hyphenate here, and today we're gonna go over the fundamental camera settings for video, aperture, shutter speed, or shutter angle, and ISO, or gain. First, we're gonna put our camera into manual mode to allow us to control all three parameters. So first, let's talk about aperture. Aperture is the opening of a lens that allows light to pass through and reach your camera's sensor. In photo, it's measured in f-stops. In film, it's measured in t-stops. Different lenses have different adjustable aperture ranges. For example, a lens may have f1.4 to f16. Another lens may have f2.8 to f22, etc. The lower the f-stop, the wider the opening in the lens, thus wider aperture. That allows more light into the sensor, creating a brighter image and also giving you a more shallow depth of field. So your background or foreground, whatever is not in focus, will be more blurry. So to give you an example, here I'm controlling my camera with my phone. So if I change the f-stop from currently f1.3 to something higher, like an f5.6, you're gonna see it got darker, but also the background is more in focus now. So let me go ahead and bring up the light, just that way we can get a clean look. So now the light is pretty much right in front of me, 100% output power, it's a really bright light, so it's actually really bright on me. We're still at f5.6, but now you can really see the background, the brick wall, how much more is in focus. So the higher the f-stop, the more narrow the opening, hence a narrow aperture. You get less blur, more of the image in focus, you get less light, resulting in a darker image. Now a term that a lot of people use is referring to a lens as fast a fast lens. That tends to be a lens with a wider aperture such as f1.8, f1.4, f1.2, etc. Wider apertures are ideal for portraits, scenes with low light, and have a more cinematic look on video. Higher f-stops are great for landscapes, buildings, products, or if you have multiple people in a photo. Now most consumer and prosumer cameras use the term shutter speed, though a lot of film cameras use shutter angle, and some cameras allow you to choose between the two. Now shutter speed and shutter angle directly correlate with your frame rate, your frames per second, and that's very important. The cinematic look is 24 frames per second, though in NTSC it's 23.976, Either one is fine. For traditional broadcast in North America, South America, and Japan, it's 30 frames per second. And most video games are 60 frames per second or higher. Now pretty much everything I shoot and output is 24 frames per second because I like that cinematic look. There is a golden rule for video to capture what looks like normal motion blur that the human eye sees. And that's to have your shutter speed at double the size of your frames per second, your frame rate. So here we are screen recording my phone, which is able to control my camera, and I wanna go over the settings. So I'm shooting at 24 frames per second, as you can see here on the top left corner. My shutter speed is set to 1 48th of a second. Again, the 24 times two, doubled. Now a lot of cameras don't have 1 48th of a second shutter speed as an option. It might be 1 50th, and that works fine, use that. Now, if you're shooting 30 frames per second frame rate, you would want your shutter speed to be 1 60th. If you're shooting at 60 frames per second, you'd want your shutter speed at 1 1 20th of a second. Now, if you're shooting with a camera that has the option shutter angle instead of shutter speed, then all you have to do is set your shutter angle to 180 degrees. That is the doubling of the shutter speed. So you'll get that natural motion blur. Now, if you have a lower shutter speed, you're gonna get more motion blur, which can give either a dreamy or a psychedelic type of vibe, something where you're zoned out, spaced out, and then if you increase your shutter speed, you get a lot more choppy, a lot more hard movement, which is usually ideal for action scenes, but for the natural smooth motion, double your shutter speed or 180 degrees on your shutter angle. If you wanna know more about how to shoot proper slow motion, I do have another video on this channel that breaks that down. And also, if you wanna know more about how to cut light, so that way you can keep your shutter speed what it should be, but if you're in a scenario like outside, where that shutter speed is so low that you're letting so much light into your camera that it's overexposing, it's getting too bright, you'll need an ND filter or variable ND filter, and I have a video that breaks that down as well. So lastly, we have ISO, and it's not ISO, it's just ISO. Now this adjusts your sensor sensitivity to light, so the higher you bring up your ISO, the more light. The lower the ISO, the darker. However, there are some trade-offs. The higher you go up in ISO, the more noise you're gonna get in your image, so more grain and less sharpness. And the lower you are in your ISO, the cleaner the image, less grain, less noise, and sharper. So generally, I shoot at the lowest possible ISO and only raise it up as I need it. So here, controlling my camera, right now we are currently at ISO 400, shooting at f1.2, so wide open, and a shutter speed of 1 48th of a second. So at 400 ISO, I have very little noise, 
If I go down to 50, the lowest I can go, I'm gonna have the cleanest image. So if I wanna make this properly exposed, I would need to increase my lights to make sure that I have a good exposure with the lights and keeping my ISO low. But if I keep the lights at the power that they are at now, I'm gonna need to go towards 400 ISO in order to get a good exposure. Now there are two very important tools that pretty much every camera has that will help you make sure that you get a well-balanced, proper exposure, and that's multimetering and histogram. There are many videos on YouTube that will show you how to use them for your specific camera. So there you guys have it. Those are the fundamentals for video. I do have a lot of other playlists on this channel that give you guys tips on filmmaking, lighting, audio, etc. Make sure to check those out. Now we did shoot this video at Doubt Me Studios, which is my film photo studio in Los Angeles County. If you're interested in booking it for your productions, we do have a link in the description or just check out doubtmestudios.com. Hopefully this video helped you. We have a lot of other playlists on this channel that go over video, photo, flash, lighting, etc. So check out those playlists. Please make sure to drop a like on this video, drop a comment below if you have any questions, and please make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming soon. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.